Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Tales from the Front Desk. Story one is by XX. <laughs> story one is by XX Trash Panda 12XX. No, we are not required to provide a Thanksgiving meal. This just happened a bit ago. I tried to post before, but got auto modded for being too short, and I will try again with some more descriptive padding. Basically, as the title says, a guest showed up today and asked me what we do for guests for a Thanksgiving meal. Sorry for formatting, I'm writing on mobile. Simple answer, or so I thought. Me equals me, obviously. HG equals hungry guest. Me, unfortunately, we don't provide any such service. There will still be the continental breakfast in the morning. HG, what do you mean you don't provide that? What kind of resort is this? Me, I do agree that calling this place a resort is a bit of a misnomer, but I can't do anything about that. We are a standard service, business hotel. HG, well, where can I go to get a good meal tomorrow? Me, well, there are a number of restaurants located nearby. You could try any one of those. And in addition, I believe there are a few churches in town that host community meals for Thanksgiving. Anyone can go, and you don't need to be a resident. HG, I don't like churches. You seriously don't do anything for people stuck here over the holiday? Me wincing at the phrasing, stuck here. No, we do not. HG, I can't believe this. I have never had a resort do this to me. I really hope you're ready to give me a discount for this inconvenience. Me, again, I do apologize about the misunderstanding regarding the naming of the hotel, But there really isn't much else I can do or say. Thanksgiving meals for guests is not something we've ever offered in the six years I've been here, and therefore not having one this year isn't something I can swing a discount for. HG, I want to speak with your manager. It's a Karen. It's a Karen. Me, no problem. She'll be back on Friday morning. Here's her card. HG, so you're saying you're not going to provide me a meal for Thanksgiving and I can't even get a discount until Friday? This is ridiculous. I'm calling the corporate line. I hope you're ready to lose your job. I am awaiting the call back from customer care any minute. I'm sure they and I will have a good laugh. Good lord, the entitlement of some people. A lot of people, though, will also just raise a stink to try to get a discount. They know that there's no extra food service offered. They just want you to reduce their rates in the room. It's not an uncommon thing for them to get their way. Our next story is by Nixon's Back 87. Finally got to tell a Karen no, and it felt so good. This happened a couple weeks ago, but I forgot to post about it. So a woman comes in, literally named Karen, and asks to make a reservation for the night. She says, I stay here usually every month for a couple days, but due to health issues, I haven't been able to come recently. Something about that rang familiar, but before I could put much thought to it, she said, And I get a $90 rate. And that reminded me of how, over six months earlier, she'd come in and said the exact same thing to me. At the time, I wasn't sure if she was indeed a regular or someone who had something negotiated with the other managers, since I was still fairly new to the property. And when I looked for and found her previous stay, it was indeed a $90 rate. And we had plenty of rooms, and the standard rate was only 120 that night. So at the time, I gave it to her, but I made a mental note to check with the others and see if there was a reason. Then, I followed up with the other two managers and sales director, and lo and behold, none of them knew who she was or could find any reason why she would have such a deal. So I made a mental note that the next time I saw her, she would not get such a deal. So, cut back to the present day, and it's a whole different situation. Not only are we nearly full, unlike last time, but our rate is $178. Okay, ma'am, I do have rooms available tonight, and our standard rate is $178. I get a $90 rate. I only ever get a $90 rate, and I've paid that every time I stay here. So I very politely tell her, I understand that. However, just because something has been in the past doesn't mean it will always be that way. Our occupancy is high tonight and our rates are up, so I can't give you a room for $90. That would be almost half of our standard rate. Well, that's not my problem. I'm only paying the $90. Well, then I'm afraid I can't give you a room for tonight. This is outrageous. I want to speak to the manager. You, in fact, are speaking to the manager. 
deadpan stare for four solid seconds. Well, this is ridiculous. I won't be coming back here ever again. Have a wonderful night, ma'am. Followed by me ignoring her and going back to me typing on my computer while she harumphed and stormed off. The real kicker, I went back and searched her in our systems, and as far back as we've been open, 15 years, she's only stayed eight total times, only four since COVID, and only those four were at the $90 rate, and one of them was the previous stay I had given her because I was unsure. Suffice to say, eight stays over 15 years and half those at $90, I think I may have just barely avoided financially ruining the property, but it felt so good just to tell her no and then watch her implode. Down in the comments by T-N-H-R-R-Y, Harry, Harry, maybe? Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I once had a dude walk in and ask for a room. Well, I had rooms to sell. I quoted him the rate, he complained about it, and I did the usual explanation of how I'm not authorized to give discounts. He continued escalating his displeasure and his tone about the rate, said he would review us poorly and that we're not worth the rate I was quoting, blah blah blah. I looked him in the eye, told him that I was not going to rent to him, and asked him to get out of my lobby now. He hesitated for a second because he was not expecting me to stand up to him and continued berating me. So I picked up the phone and called 911 immediately, and he fled like a rat. The dispatcher asked if I had any reason to believe he was under the influence of any substances. I said yes, he was probably on meth and drunk because of his aggressive behavior. They never caught him, but it was great to cut him down one notch. It was obvious that he thought he could intimidate me into giving him a discount. Not on my watch. Good on you, Hurry, Harry, Tien, Hurry, <laughs> whatever your name is. Our last story today is by former birthday 3248. I'm the full night auditor at my hotel. Approximately a month and a half ago, we had a gentleman staying with us, and at about three in the morning, I had a room call to the desk and complained that the gentleman across from them was playing music extremely loudly. So I went up to the floor, and as soon as I got to the elevator, I could hear the music. It was blasting some love song. As I turned down the hallway, I could see a neon light-up pineapple sitting in the hall in front of the door. The door was propped open with the towel, with a speaker sitting on top of the towel. I tapped on the door and explained to this guest that he could not have him play music loud enough that it was disturbing other guests, and that he would have to turn it down. He said okay and picked up the speaker and went back into his room. I've worked in hotels for quite a while now, and I know how some people can be, so I walked down to the elevators and waited for a moment. And sure as heck, he walked right back out with his speaker and stuck it back in the hallway on the towel. So I went back down and tapped on the door again and said, Sir, you're going to have to take the speaker into your room and shut the door. It's disturbing other guests, and this is our hotel quiet hours, which, by the way, are posted on every floor. I could tell he was a little agitated, but he said sorry and picked up the speaker and turned it off and picked up the towel and went back in his room. About half an hour later, he came down through the lobby with his pineapple, a couple of heart-shaped balloons, and left the parking lot. About an hour later, at this point it's about 5 a.m., he called the front desk. We have caller ID. He asked me what time it was, to which I replied that it was 5 a.m., and he mentioned that he was still on the time of the name of the town he comes from. I told him, no problem, then he asked me what time sunrise was. I told him I was not exactly sure, but gave him an approximate time, and he told me at that point, that's okay. He could look it up online, to which I'm thinking, how come you don't know the time? But of course I didn't say that. He thanked me, and I told him to have a nice day. He stayed the next night, and there were no noise complaints, but he did leave at about the same time with his pineapple and balloons to presumably go do whatever it is that one does with a pineapple and balloons. Fast forward a couple weeks, he was at the hotel again. At this point, I find out that there were other noise complaints during the day, which of course nobody bothered to tell me because I'm just the night audit troll, and I'm often forgotten about as far as information about daytime hotel activities goes. He once again left the hotel at about the same time. No pineapple this time, just a bunch of six or seven heart-shaped mylar balloons, and went and sat in his car with the balloons tied to the front bumper of the car for about two hours. As he was not disturbing anybody and was not making any noise, I of course didn't say anything to him. 
There's no law saying he can't sit in his car with a bunch of balloons tied to it. He came back in at about 6 a.m., which is breakfast time, started playing pool and proceeded to turn his speaker on full blast. The same love song type music that he played the first visit. I had to go tell him that that needed to be turned off and he couldn't be playing music loudly like that in the lobby. Come to find out the next night, he had been rented a room only on if he agreed to follow hotel policy rules and also was told he was not allowed to play loud music on his speaker and not allowed to play music on his speaker while in the lobby. Here's where it comes in that I should have been informed of this, because he had been told if this were to happen again, he would immediately be asked to leave. But I was unaware of that. So, he was put on the do not rent list. But yet a week later, as nobody around here seems to know how to communicate or use communication log and write things down, I came to work and the 3 to 11 desk attendant had a story to tell about how, once again, he had been allowed to rent a room. And this time, police had to be called and remove him because he had threatened our sales manager with a pool cue and refused to turn the music down. So he is now officially on our do not rent list and I have made it my mission to make sure that all of our desk attendants know do not rent a room to him. As having to call the police to remove a guest is never my idea of a good night. I'm very curious as to what he thought he could accomplish with the light up pineapple and balloons. The hotel I work at is mostly military and business people. We don't have a lot of families. It's in a very quiet area. There are not a lot of people that just walk through this area and certainly not through the hotel, especially at night where doors are locked and you need a key to get entry. But I mean, hey, to each his own as long as it's not disturbing my other guests. So this post brought forth a couple colorful comments down below. Down by Squirtail, S-K-W-R-L, Squirtail. <laughs> Fun fact. Years ago, pineapples were so exotic and expensive, people would come to your party just to see your pineapple. If you couldn't get one, you could rent one. Now they're everywhere, and thank goodness, because pineapple is one of my favorite fruits. Underneath that by Snoo Peripherals 2409. From some other subreddit, I learned that these days a pineapple is a symbol for swingers. Maybe he was hoping to attract other swingers? Under that by Squirrel Tail again. Probably... One wonders if he was thinking they would just show up or maybe he was trying to contact them on various sites or something. Whatever it is, it doesn't look like he got what he wanted. And under that, by understanding old 4276, upside down pineapples equals swingers. Friendly. I didn't know that until I read these comments today, so I gotta make sure that I don't have any pineapple things hanging around. Especially if they're upside down. I have always loved pineapples. It's one of my favorite fruits, even though it has a tendency to make your mouth hurt if you have like a tiny little scrape or cut on your lip. They are very tasty. And no, pineapple does not go on pizzas. And I know some of you will want to fight me about that, but I prefer my pineapple just raw. Raw pineapple. That's when it's the best for me. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have a sweet day. <laughs>